Welcome to episode six of Guitar Books, the podcast. I'm excited to be here with you today. This is my podcast where I talk about music books. I love learning from all different sources, whether it's in-person lessons or your friend or uh, online video resources or books. I just happen to learn very well from books myself, and there are lots of great books out there, so it's hard to sort through them and figure out what which book would be the best for you. So today I'm going to be talking about Fingerstyle Guitar from Scratch by Bruce Emery. But before I do that, I want to tell you about my book, Arranging for Fingerstyle Guitar. It's available for purchase on my website as an ebook. In this book, you'll learn how to arrange a simple melody in hundreds of different ways, in many different styles, all under the umbrella of solo fingerstyle guitar. It's different than any of the other books out there, I think, in the way that I present the information, and I hope that it would be valuable to you if you're looking to get into solo fingerstyle guitar. Also, if you haven't heard my music, please check out Riding the Wave. It's my second solo fingerstyle guitar album, although it has some ukulele tracks, several ukulele tracks, and one piano track. It's available on Spotify or all of the streaming platforms. So, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be discussing Fingerstyle Guitar from Scratch from Bruce Emery. This is an introductory fingerstyle method. It is aimed at players who want to learn how to play fingerstyle accompaniment, not solo fingerstyle guitar arrangements, although it's a great foundation for that. Being a foundation, it's great for beginner players through early intermediate players. It's a really good first book if you're looking to get into fingerstyle guitar. One of the really cool things about this book is that Bruce Emery is a legitimately funny guy, at least to me. His sense of humor is infused into the writing. Um, it, he has a lot of detailed explanations of things, and because of his lighthearted sense of humor, it makes it all easier to read. And there really is a lot of important information in the writing, in the text. So if you take the time to read through that, you'll get a lot more out of this book. You could jump around from example to example and just play, but you really will get a lot of the details in the text that will make you a better player forever. So, five big things about this book. It's an excellent first book for beginner fingerstyle guitarists. Second, A plus for entertainment value of the writing. Third, there are lots of short generic examples. But there are several famous old tunes like Landslide from Fleetwood Mac, uh, Blackbird from the Beatles, Camp Town Races, Stephen Foster tune at the end, Dust in the Wind. So you're not going to get any popular modern tunes, but this book is meant to teach you how to play fingerstyle guitar, and you can use the techniques you learn in this book to play along to any song. Okay, next. Half the book focuses on arpeggiation, and the second half of the book focuses on Travis style alternating bass. There are some really interesting subsections. First of all, there's a James Taylor section, which I really like. It's only a couple pages, but there are some nice insights into James Taylor's playing. Also, there's a short section on Bossa Nova that's pretty fun to go through. Uh, you can learn Girl from Ipanema, how to actually play that in an authentic bossa nova style. So there is audio for this book that you can get online from Bruce Emery's website. The audio, the playing is really good, and the examples are helpful. It is a little confusing because the examples and the page numbers from the website don't exactly always line up with the page numbers in the book. I don't know if I have a different edition or something. I got this about a decade ago. but. It is helpful to have that online audio, just know that it, it doesn't always line up. If you click on examples for page 6, you might get the examples for page 5. If you make it through this book and you do the reading and you really practice the examples, you'll have a great foundation for playing fingerstyle guitar. If you want to move on and learn solo fingerstyle guitar, you can do that. He's actually got a book on an introduction to Travis picking. I haven't gone through it personally, but I imagine that it's pretty good knowing the kind of writer he is, and it's probably funny and fun to read through. I do recommend using a steel string acoustic guitar for this rather than a classical guitar, 
only because there are some places where you need to use your fretting hand thumb over the top. That being said, there's always a way to do it using a classical guitar or not using the thumb over the top, so I just wanted to forewarn you. Okay, I'm going to go through the book, and I'm going to give you an, a detailed look into the types of information you'll find in here, and I'll play through some of the examples so that you get a sense of how difficult it is and if it sounds like something you want to learn. Okay, so he starts out, the first half of the book is focused on arpeggiation, and he starts with a very simple pattern, and he builds from that pattern. So he starts out with just a very simple E minor chord. You don't even have to hold down the fingers because you're not going to pluck those strings. It's just an ascending arpeggio. And then he moves on, and he presents that arpeggio instead of this high tier is what he calls this, where your index fingers on the third string, middle fingers on the second, ring fingers on the first string, you're actually going to move those fingers to the fourth, third, and second strings, and you do have to fret this E minor chord. And then he shows you how to do this in the lower tier, the low, low tier is what he calls this. So you're on the, your thumb's on the sixth string, index is on the fifth, middle on the fourth, ring on the third. So there are some examples he provides. Uh, let's move on to the next page. Here's a nice one. Here's just a chord sequence he provides using this arpeggio number one. And I'll play it for you now. He's got, he introduces fretting hand notation. Before he was only putting which finger to use on the string and he was giving you a chord chart above. Now he starts at a, using normal tablature where the fret numbers are written into the tab instead of just the finger numbers. He has some cool ideas. He presents the continuity pr principle which he, I believe, invented, but basically he's just saying that you want to make sure that there aren't any silent gaps while you're changing chords, and he talks about how to achieve that. So you get a really lush, flowy sound. Then he has the diversion principle, which says that the best time to release an old note is at the very same time that we start a new note. And this is because when you pull off, there's always a little ping, a little fret noise when you pull a finger off. And so he says to pull a finger off while you're plucking another note. He also has the Indiana Jones principle. If you imagine from Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark, when he is being he's running through a cave and a boulder's chasing him, you know, he doesn't have to stay way in front of the boulder, he just has to stay in front of the boulder. And Bruce Emery, he compares that to playing fingerstyle guitar, in which you don't actually have to get the whole chord put down all at once. You just have to get the fingers down that you need before your picking hand needs to pick those fingers. So I think it's a really nice way to describe this and I think it's very useful for playing fingerstyle guitar. Moving on, he talks, he has more examples using arpeggio one. He talks about escape hatches where you get to pluck open strings while you're changing chords, he's got Malaganya, which is a famous Spanish classical song. He talks about playing in other meters like 3 4 or 6 8. Here's one. Here's House of the Rising Sun, which is in 6 8 time. I'll play it for you now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> I'm 
sure you've all heard that one. It's a great finger style, beginning finger style song. It goes back to 4-4 four, four time. There's in a studio, a Spanish tune here, and it uses guide fingers. I'll play it now. Great arpeggiation workout. Moving on, he's got more arpeggios. He talks about pairing up a couple of your fingers, like thumb, index, and then your middle and ring together. To fatten up your sound. And he's got longer arpeggiation sequences. Finally, on page 34, he has 20 arpeggios, a retrospective, where he's got all of the arpeggios written out one after another. This is a great page to refer to. I like it as a warm-up. I just go through these to get my fingers warmed up before playing. Um, he talks about mixing quarter notes and eighth notes, so leaving some gaps in the patterns, something like You can leave that gap in different places, and he goes through how to do that. Eventually, he gets to the James Taylor finger style section. I really, I really like this section. But this is basically in my mind. I've gone to Carolina, and he starts out with this example. Then he adds some moving bass notes. pickup notes then he adds some hammer-ons so it's really sound like James Taylor there there is a bit more on James Taylor then the next section is the bossa nova section so you can do, like he's got this introduction to bossa nova playing, which is basically you're bouncing back and forth from your thumb to your fingers in different patterns. So here's the first one he's got. There are a couple more. Then he gets to Girl from Ipanema in the key of F major. This is a really famous bossa nova tune from Brazil. pretty way of playing. So then we get to part two, Travis Style Basics. The whole second half of the book is on Travis Style. Travis Style is where you're playing an alternating bass line, so something like a... it's usually root third or root fifth or something like that. So he starts out with just learning to use your thumb, alternating between strings, and then adding some fingers playing treble notes. And then he starts giving you different chord progressions to play this with. So here's one. Yeah, so that's like what so many singer-songwriters use to accompany themselves while they're playing. It's really important to know how to do it, and this book does a great job of giving you all the details of how to do that cleanly and smoothly. Okay, moving on, he 
presents the accompaniment for Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Then House of the Rising Sun in a 4-4 Travis style, which is different from the original, but it's cool that he did it. Uh, then he has a Travis picking repertory. Uh, so there's lots of songs that utilize Travis picking. And it's good to listen to if you want to hear Travis picking in action and get some ideas and inspiration. He's got the main riff to landslide, which everybody who's into Travis picking has probably heard at some point or learned to play, but here it is. That's the main verse riff. He's got variations of the Travis pattern, so instead of going from your thumb to your index finger, you go to, from your thumb to your middle finger first. This is called an outside-in pattern. So just slightly different, but it might sound better with the song you're playing. When you get to playing solo fingerstyle guitar, it's really important to be able to mix up the patterns to place your melody notes where they need to be. Then he's just got lots more examples. He's got the triple alternating bass option where your thumb is actually, instead of just alternating between two strings, it's alternating among three strings. Um, so for an A minor chord, that's root, fifth, it's the lower fifth, back to the fifth. For a C major chord, you could go root, third, fifth, third. It's really important to get some variation to your in your bass lines. He's got a section on walking bass lines, which is really, really cool. Here's this example. This is on page 58. He's basically just walking up or down the scale to the root of the next chord. It sounds really good. Sounds like the bass is doing more than just a repetitive pattern. He's got Travis style pinch pattern next. Here's Dust in the Wind. This is a really famous tune. It's from this is a 1977 rock ballad by Kansas. So everyone's probably heard this one. It uses a pinch on beat one of each measure, and the rest of it, it it's all Travis style. So here we go. So it's not too hard if you've got some experience, but it's a great, great tune to learn. It's got a little bit of melody going from... So you're kind of getting an introduction to solo finger style there. More examples. He adds in the ring finger. So we've been kind of just using thumb, index, middle. You add the ring, like on a D chord. Nothing too crazy there, but he adds new things progressively in a way that doesn't overwhelm you while you're going through it, especially if you are new to fingerstyle. It's a great first book if you've never played fingerstyle. Okay, so there's a cool little section on Jerry Reed. fun accompaniment style. And Jerry Reed's done a lot of great finger style stuff. Then we finally have 20 Travis patterns, a retrospective. So it's just the 20 patterns listed out. Again, great for warming up. Then he's got some more samples from the field. So just tunes that you might know, 
There's one from Dan Fogelberg's leader of the band. Then he's got a Travis picked a different version of Dust in the Wind. Then he's got a version of Dust in the Wind that uses lots of different Travis patterns. So he already has the, the simple version a few pages back, but this one's just got lots of different Travis patterns, patterns back to back, so it's a little bit more challenging. So then there's Blackbird, Paul McCartney's famous fingerstyle guitar tune. So I like that he, I like that he goes through this. He talks about a lot of people after the, after the, this part, when he figured it out by ear originally, he was saying he did it like this. Gives you this bass line. But actually, the bass line should. So you could do that like this. But that's really hard. So he shows you how to do it like Paul McCartney, where you're. And finally, the last two pages, he gets into solo finger style using Travis style, and there's a little introduction, and then there's a one-page solo arrangement of Camp Town Races. I'll go ahead and play that now. the melody very straight quarter note obviously if you were to hear it you're probably gonna hear the but this is just an introduction to playing solo fingerstyle arrangements where you've got a Travis style bass line and you've got the melody on top so if you are interested in getting deeper into the topic of solo fingerstyle guitar, you can check out Bruce Emery's book on Travis style from scratch. There's also some other great books out there like the Alfred fingerstyle guitar method, the beginning book, the Hal Leonard fingerstyle method, and I really like the Chad Atkins method that Mel Bay released. That's really good if you want to do specifically Travis style alternating bass. Okay, so that's the book, the end of the book. I hope that was helpful for you to see some of the examples from the book and hear what you would be learning. If you make it through this book, you'll have a great foundation for playing fingerstyle guitar. If you want to go on and learn how to play more solo fingerstyle guitar arrangements, you will be ready to start that. If you just want to play fingerstyle guitar accompaniment, you will be well equipped to do so. It's nice to add that to your arsenal of skills so that you don't always have to strum. Strumming is great, but it's nice to be able to mix in some finger picking. Also, I mentioned at the beginning of the video or the podcast that I have a book arranging for fingerstyle guitar. It's available as an ebook from my website. There's a link below in the show description. In this book, I show you how to take one simple melody and arrange it in hundreds of different ways. From a simple melody and bass arrangement to adding inner harmony, to thicken things up, to utilizing a Travis style alternating bass line, to using arpeggiation to create a beautiful flowing arrangement, to using thirds and sixths and tenths to harmonize the melody, to using natural and artificial harmonics. I show you how to transpose the song to different keys because certain songs just sit better on the guitar in different keys. I show you how to use alternate tunings like Drop D and Dadgad, and I also go really deep into the topic of reharmonization. It's something that I'm particularly interested in. Reharmonization is when you change the harmonizing chords underneath the melody. It can give the song a completely different feel um, or ambiance. Uh, this is my dog Athena. She wanted to come say hi. If you're watching the video, you can see her. Hey Athena, good girl. 
But yeah, so if you are interested in my book, please check it out. And if you haven't heard my music, Riding the Wave is available on all streaming platforms. Please check that out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate all the support, and I'll see you next time.